Hello, I'm Dave Moitz, and welcome to Successful Farming. On today's program, I track the sale of a Bobcat skid steer loader. Then we feature an innovative drill bit carousel designed for a drill stand that anyone can build and use. The engine man, Ray Bohax, offers tips on how to service a hydraulic master cylinder. And after these brief messages, I travel to Green Bay Packer Country, Wisconsin, to tour an innovative shop designed by the Olson family. So please stay tuned. Welcome to Top Shop Tours. Karn and Doug Olson had a magic shop complex at their Mondovi, Wisconsin farm for decades. Doug and his brother Bruce were doing a great deal of work on big equipment outdoors. Karn was managing the farm from the kitchen pantry. They dreamed of a shop that would not only provide ample heated space for repairs and an office complex to run the business, but also a structure where the family would gather on holidays and special occasions. Let's go talk to Doug about the shop of his family's dreams. So Doug, let's start out with the general structure. You had this erected 2012. 12. And you went with a structure that was what size again? 80 by 125 by 20. And it's a clear span building. Clear span building. Right, 20 foot sidewalls. Now I gotta ask about that because some guys, there's a debate. It used to be 14, then it was 16 inch si or foot sidewalls. A lot of guys will go 18. You like the 20 just because of the clearance it gave you. We could get taller doors in the sidewalls. Our, our drive through doors are 17 feet, so we never have a trouble of hitting them. So talking about doors, I love the floor plan you have with your door arrangement here. Why don't you walk through the building and how you did that. Now, facing towards the east, right? Yep. On the doors over here, start yep. there. Uh, I don't know, it's just, kind of what we wanted, I guess. Uh, right. We figured we needed a drive through. The door is 24 by 17. Okay. And so we can drive two semis through at the same time if we want. And these are opposing on the side yep, walls. East of the and shop. west. And then off the end wall, that is a larger yep. uh, overhead door. Yep, than that 30 by 18. And that's where you bring the planter in or the combines? Combines, in. mainly combines and, and planters, I guess, yeah. You got to talk about the windows because we do have windows on the doors. Yep. But you put your windows and rather large windows at the top of the building. Explain why. For light. Light and a little bit of solar heat in the wintertime. It does. It, you know, when I walked in here without the lights being on, I was amazed how light it was yeah. in here without the lights on. Yeah, there's, there's days that we don't even turn them on. That's kind of a nice feature to have. Would you do that? You'd recommend that on any shop if someone yes. were building it? Yes. And that size window, some guys put in too small a window, it appears to me because you went with a wider window up there. Well, they just kind of fit the area, I guess, nicely. Yeah. I think they're three by eight, I believe. Now, the other thing is when we came in that I found unique, and I've only seen this in a couple other shops, you kind of almost have a living area right outside the office with a television. And that's something you can clear away if you have to. If, if we have to, space. yeah. In front of our 20 foot door, if we need to get something in there, or seriously, we can move all that out of the road and and use it. Well, your kids come over quite a bit. Oh yeah. And you've got at least one grandchild. Yep, one grandson. And then they come over here and play then. Oh yeah. Again, the the shop almost became kind of partly living quarters, isn't it, in a way? I mean, where family and friends will gather here. Not that you're living here, but you're entertaining, you bring people out. It's a multi-purpose building. It's a, yeah, that's a good description of it. Here's a great idea to consider if you are building a shop or modifying an existing structure. The Olsons partitioned off a corner of their shop to create this parts room that not only holds a wealth of parts, but everything else from lubricants to tools. And that was kind of the nice thing about the other feature in that sh it, you have in the shop because it's a nice way to put stuff away. And that's the parts room and the tool room that you have in the yeah. other corner. Yeah. Explain what size room is that and, and what all goes stored in there? I don't even know the size of it, but uh, some of our larger socket sets and tools and def stored in there and oil and it's kind of a catch-all room too, I guess. Right. On the opposite corner of the shop, that's kind of your, if there's a 
There is no such thing as a fixed workbench here. You put everything on wheels. Everything right? is on wheels. We use rolling benches to roll out the projects we're working on. And, and then our, our waste oil is in that corner and we kind of store the torch and the welder over there. And, yeah. and we use it where it's needed, as needed. The two other things that I noticed here, and this is the second time I've seen this in a farm shop, the scissors lift that you had. Oh yes. And you got to tell me about this. This was one of those things you don't normally see in farm shops, but it, uh, well, kind of an indispensable tool. Yes, well, we use it on the combines, uh, tractor cabs on the roofs and stuff, and and especially the semi trailers for tarps and oh. and everything like that. It's much safer than a rolling ladder or anything. And the other thing was your floor cleaner. Now I begin to see more of these in farm shops, you, but yours is a, and I, most of them are just kind of vacuum units, right? This is water and vacuum. Okay, and the advantage to that is? Well, it wets the dust down and sucks it up at the same time. Oh, okay. Kind of a Zamboni for, for yeah. shop floors then. Yep. There isn't too much that Doug would change on his shop, except to add to the length of the overhang from four to six feet and to go with 42 inch wide service doors. So Doug, if you had to change anything? My service doors. How so? There's 36 inch doors, I would put in 42s. Oh really? Just for the ease of getting things through them. Oh. An extra six inches to roll, a, to roll the steamer through, to roll the welder through, tool cart, just anything. I would have 42 inch doors. I've seen some guys starting to do that in their farm shop with the extra wide service door or passageway door. Uh, the gentleman we bought the building from, he had a, another client here to view the building and he asked me what I would change and I said about the only thing I would change is my service doors to 42 inch doors. And the gentleman we bought the building from, he goes, yep, that's what we're recommending now. The Olsons gave a lot of thought to what would become their farm's headquarters. Karn's going to give us an overview of their shop office complex. So Karn, why don't you take us on a tour of the office? Because you had a lot of uh, involvement, not only in the design of the shop itself, but also in the office. So when you first come in off the shop floor, you go through the main door. That goes right into what, a kitchen? Into the kitchen area. So what did you all put in the kitchen area? Is it a full service kitchen? It's a full service kitchen. And you will use this then for your noon meals or yes. whenever it's necessary? Whenever ne necessary, correct. And then your office is in there? Yes, my office is in there. So that's where all the hard work takes place then. Right. <laughs> and when you put that together, what were you looking for? What kind Just of a layout, something easy. So I had a lot of uh, counter space to work with. Oh. So when you have a project going, you're always waiting for another piece of information so you can leave it lay. And a really neat idea that I've yet to see in a shop office, and that's your file room. Correct. What a cool idea that is. Where'd you come up with that? Um, I happen to be offered the file cabinets. Oh, the filing cabinets came first then. The filing cabinets came first before the shop was even built. It happened to be at the same time we were building the shop. Yeah. And we kind of tried to work them in there, and it turned out. Harn, one of the ideas that I I had liked, and that's where you put a sink outside in the shop. And that was mostly to keep people from tramping into the bathroom and dirtying right. it up. Right, Keep the guys outside in the shop with all their grease and dirt and all that and make the mess out there before it takes it into the, into the bathroom area. And you just didn't put an old wash tub out there. You, no. you kind of wanted it to be used underneath yep. as well. Yep, yep. So we have storage underneath to put all the cleaning stuff and rags and stuff like that in there. The Olsons have found, like a great many other farm families, that the shop becomes an essential family gathering center. I'll see you next time on another Top Shop Tour. Now back to the game. And Green Bay scores! Yay! Yay! Hello friends and Ray Bohax here. Welcome to the Engine Man segment of the Successful Farming TV show. You know, they call me the Engine Man, but in practical terms, if you make it go, you have to make it stop. So what today's segment is gonna be about brakes and the master cylinder on a hydraulic system. And it makes no difference whether this is on a tractor, whether it's on a car, pickup truck, 
any hydraulic braking system using a master cylinder. And there's a couple of things I want to go over. They're, they're little points, but they're really imperative for you to understand them to properly service a master cylinder. The first thing I want to discuss is that before you take the lid off of any hydraulic system, master cylinder, clutch cylinder, you need to clean that. You don't want the dirt and the dust to get into the fluid because that is an abrasive and it is going to end up wearing out the whole braking system. So the first procedure is to clean that. Then we will take the lid off the reservoir and you may have wondered why on many systems there's a larger and a smaller reservoir. If the system has front disc brakes, the larger reservoir is always for the disc brakes because the fluid level is actually the adjustment for the pads. As the pad starts to wear, the fluid level drops. The smaller reservoir is for the drum brake set of part of the system. Now, a very common problem would be that you had a brake system failure, let's say a wheel cylinder went bad or you changed the caliper on it for whatever reason, and after you bled the brakes, shortly thereafter the master cylinder failed. Well, that is your fault, not the master cylinder's fault. Because what happens is inside the master cylinder there is a piston, and this piston goes back and forth when you step on the brake pedal and creates the hydraulic pressure to operate the brakes. When you are bleeding the brakes, it is imperative that you either put a piece of wood underneath the brake pedal or put your other shoe so you limit the travel of the piston in the bore. What happens is if you do not do that, the piston goes outside of the bore, the cup, and then when you release it, the spring pulls it back and you tear the cup. If you ever had a carburetor part, that cup looks almost like an accelerator pump on an old carburetor and you end up, by having the pedal travel too far, you end up tearing the cup on the master cylinder and shortly thereafter it fails. You tend to think that it just failed because the other component failed, but you actually failed, ruined it while you were bleeding it. The best way to bleed a master cylinder, a new master cylinder, is to use a, a, a dedicated bleeding tool. You could ble bench bleed this with this tool, you, it goes into the port, it goes into the fluid, and then you could use a dowel in a vise and pump the piston back and forth, limiting the travel and getting all the air out of the system. Another way to bleed an entire system very efficiently without damaging the master cylinder is to use a one-man bleeder. And keep in mind that brake fluid is hygroscopic. It wicks in fluid. So whenever you buy a can of brake fluid and you open it up, put your date on it that you opened it up. If it's more than six or seven months old, get rid of it. I'm over in Columbia and Ohio at the Firestone Test Center. You have a blessed day and make sure you take good care of that master cylinder. Join me at sale to see what used Bobcat skid steer loaders are selling for after these brief messages. Agriculture is enjoying a price windfall in construction and landscaping equipment thanks to those industries enjoying brisk business the last several years. This is placing low hour skid steer loaders like this Bobcat 773 on the used market. Now this is a 46 horsepower loader that's just showing over a thousand hours and it's equipped with auxiliary hydraulics, hydraulic outriggers, extended axles would provide for great stability on hillsides, and a 78 inch bucket that looks to be in excellent condition. This is a well-equipped skid steer in good operating shape. And if you're looking to replace an older loader but are suffering from sticker shock after considering what new skid steers are selling for, then consider a late model loader like this. So what is it worth? To help answer that question, I'm gonna go talk to Tim Myers of Steffes Auction, the firm conducting today's auction. Tim, we're looking at that Bobcat 773, and it only has a little over a thousand hours. Am I wrong, or is that thing in great shape? You know, you just don't find them like that anymore, Dave. This came from a gentleman who has a large acreage, and he bought that machine to tidy up and do his drive, but he also owns the tree spade that's right beside it. So that's got outriggers on it and a tree spade that he that was just on a quick attach, and that's what he did. I think he told me he transplanted 260 trees with that machine. <laughs> uh, Tim, that is in such great shape, and because of that, you could buy that and get a long life out of it, couldn't you? 
Absolutely, you know, that came off an acreage, which would be number one. Your number two choice would probably be livestock. Number three would be fertilizer and then maybe construction, and I don't know which direction. So that's a perfect case scenario. We also know the hours are right because it come off of an acreage. I know where it came from, and I know that gentleman's had it for quite some time. So really, really unique opportunity here we have today. So it, it doesn't have a full cab. It just has the ROPS, and it doesn't have an air conditioning system in it, of course, any more than Mother Nature would uh, provide. That detract a little bit from the price, wouldn't it? I think it does, and the one thing that guys are really wanting today in today's market is a two-speed. That skid loader, it doesn't have a two-speed, but you're not going to pay that kind of price for it either. Um, I really believe that that skid loader is going to fall somewhere in that 8 to 12 range. I think 12 is maybe a little on the high side, but that it's that pristine. Will it be mostly farmers looking at it, or will they have to bid against construction and landscaping people for it? I think a landscaper could buy that machine, but I think most likely it's going to be a farmer here today. So in that price range, that certainly is very affordable, even with beans and corns at the price that they are, right? I think that makes it the most attractive because it's, it serves the same utility as a new one, but it's not new price, Dave. Now, if I need to get more information about that crawler and say I'm bidding online because you told me over 50% of your buyers are online these days? Well, more than 50%, wow. but we're selling 50% online or a little bit better. And uh, absolutely, you call the auction company, call us, give us a call at stephasgroup.com. All our information is there, but we will tell you everything that we know. We'll give you the seller's information. You can do your own research and be your own judge, but absolutely. there's. We also believe in lots and lots of pictures. Pictures are worth a thousand words. So check out the website, call a dealer, call the auction company, lots of resources. Well, thanks for that information, Tim. Let's watch that Bobcat sell. Well, start me out. $5,000. A $6,000 bid. It'll have been five. It'll have been six. Eight down. It'll have been seven. Down. Down. Eight. Down. Down. It'll have been nine. It'll have been a week under the nine. It'll have been a week under the nine. Nine. Now you're out, sir. Eight. Nine. No, no, no. Yes, just your man's out. Give me nine. A eight bid. Nine. It'll have been eight. Five hundred. Now nine. Eighty-five. It'll have been nine. It'll have been a nine hundred. Oh, eighty-five bid. Nine. It'll have been a nine hundred. You want to buy a nice little clean motor. Ninety-five. Ninety-five. It'll have been a nine. Ninety-five. It'll have been a nine. 95 Kubota diesel guys, 90, 95, 9 bid, 95 auxiliary hydraulic, 9500, 89 bid, 95, 9 bid, 95, bear, now it'll be the 900 and 95, it'll be the 9 bid, clean, 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 92 and a half, 89 bid, 250 down and then it'll be 9, then it'll be 250 down and now, 89 bid, 250 down and bid, this is it, I'd be buying it guys if I needed one, I'll tell you that, 92 and a half. Nine bid of a two fifty. Nine bid, nine bid of a two fifty. Ninety five, ninety five bid of a two fifty. Ninety five, ninety five. What are you gonna do? Ninety five, ninety four, ninety five, ninety four, ninety five, ninety four, ninety five, ninety four, ninety five, ninety five, ninety five. Bid of a ninety four, ninety five. Down six, ninety six, ninety seven, ninety six. Ninety seven, ninety eight, ninety eight. Ninety seven, ninety eight, ninety eight. Ninety eight, 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 ninety brought a final bid of $10,000. So how does that compare to recent sales of 773s? A dozen such similar Bobcats brought between $7,500 up to $8,500. And for good measure, I checked into dealer availability of similar Bobcats. Dealer asking prices range from $7,500 up to $15,000. Such pricing information is readily available by going online, so hit the internet and do some research before you buy. By the way, Successful Farming is offering a great tool for pricing out farm equipment. You can get two free appraisals a month from the authority on equipment values from Iron Solutions. Used by banks, manufacturers, and dealers from across North America, Iron Solution gathers actual dealer sales, auction prices, and wholesale transactions on equipment built in the last 20 years. Iron Solutions is the place dealers go to to set trade-in offers or sale prices. To get your two free appraisals each month, go to agriculture.com slash what's it worth. I'll see you again next week 
on another Steel Deals report. After these brief messages, we visit with our old friend, Roger Johnson, about another one of his innovative inventions, a drill stand attachment carousel. So please stay tuned. I'm Roger Johnson from Chandler, Minnesota, and I built this bit carousel for holding my drill bits for my drill press. I got different size bits and reamers that fit on this uh, carousel. When I need to find one, I can just turn it and locate the bits I need, take them out, and put them in my press. The center axle of the carousel is actually uh, a barbell uh, weight, uh, out of the weight set. And these plates are just sheer that come from a scrap here. They were thrown away, they chopped holes to make fabricate something. Then I welded uh, different size pipe to hold the bits, the shanks of the bits, so they stand upright and they don't touch each other. It took me about an afternoon to uh, construct this. I kind of got it welded and all the uh, holders on it. And the total cost of this is uh, probably about $5. Problems with most bits, and some farmers have that, uh, they don't do it on purpose, but they put them in a box. Well, these bits are so hard, they rub against each other and they get dull just by laying against each other. That's high carbon steel, so they should be separated from each other for storage. That's why they have a, an index when you buy bits, they space them apart. They don't want you to put them in a big pail because they just rub against each other, it dulls them down. If I was going to change anything in the carousel, I'd make the, uh, the disc bigger so I could uh, put more uh, holders in it so I could carry, hold more bits. I'm limited because I got more bits than I do spots. For more about this idea and other farmer inventions, go to agriculture.com slash TV. Please join us next week for our Christmas gift guide special program, our merry band of shopping elves, and yes, I'm one of those elves, offers a Christmas tree full of gift recommendations that range from technology gadgets to the latest in shop tools. In the meantime, be sure to visit this show's website at agriculture.com slash TV to get more information about this show and to view past episodes. And as always, let us know what you think of the show. Look for the show's email address again at agriculture.com slash TV. See you next week right here on Successful Farming. Hi, I'm Dave Mowitz. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, hit subscribe right here if you haven't already, and click that little bell right here to be notified when we post a new video. And click here to see more great episodes from Successful Farming Television.